All right, all right. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking the rear skid out of my 2021 Yamaha SRX Sidewinder. And we're going to be putting in coolant hose protectors. And we're also going to be installing some new J&T wheels I got for the skid. Because as a lot of people know, the stock wheels are junk. So all right, let's go ahead and get started. I have the sled hanging up. I have the new parts sitting here. These are the new wheels. I only bought two. I believe there's four more on there. We're going to start with two and see how it does. I'll go over, go over my whole track set up with you guys. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. It's early. Got my coffee. I got the heat on over there. It's running. So, alright guys. Alright guys, first things first. Looks like we're going to need a half inch socket. You can see the mess I have here in my toolbox. And we're going to need a 7 8 open end. Get this out of here. And it looks like it's my first time pulling a Yamaha skid. Looks like the 7 8 is going to go back here and hold this. And the half inch obviously right here. So we'll go ahead and get those two out. I believe the front slides out of this. Not sure, it's my first time pulling a Yamaha one, so let's see. Let me get these out, shut the camera off, we'll get back to you. All right, one very important thing I wanna mention, I have a SRX, so this wire here, I forgot to show you earlier, it's for the auto dampening on the shocks to be able to adjust it on the button on the handlebars. This has to be undone, it goes up through this hole here. There's a little bolt here, and there's one over here that hold this wire on before you drop the skid out. I had mine on done laying down there. But I did want to mention it's very important. You'll probably break the wire or rip it out. I'm sure if you just let it drop. So now I got the skid loosened up. Let's go ahead and get it out of here. All right, guys. And there you have it. That was my first time pulling my Yamaha one out. And it's a hell of a lot easier than the do one I really like that design front just rides up in the metal bar that goes across all right as you can see I got some shit wheels busted in half yeah I know you people out there will tell me huh oh, it's your studs oh no, it's not I cut the silent lugs off studs are bedded in the track flat I have 196 or 192 I think it's 196 hornets 1.34 is in here I am running the fat backers for the single ply studs as you can see. I did want to mention that yeah there's a lot of stuff online oh the, adult, the single ply backers don't help well in my opinion the bigger surface area you're covering especially with this kind of horsepower the less likely you are to have a pull out. That's just my idea of it that's always the way I've ran my tracks so take it for what you want take it for what you will use your own opinion on it. Um, but this thing hooks up really nicely with these Hornets in it. They're 1.34s. I got a one inch lug track. When I first bought this thing, my mistake, do your research. I listened to the dealer. I put 144 um, Woody Gold Diggers in it, which that's what I used to run on my Skidoos. They were too short. They were way too short. I forget what they were. 1.1s or something like that. That thing was... Wouldn't, wouldn't do nothing, man. It'd fall flat on its face. And yeah, my buddy's dad got around me on his 600 like butter getting out of the hole, and it just really pissed me off. So I went back, and uh, I forget the performance shop I talked to. CMB Performance, I think. The guy runs winders. And he says, No, no, you got to stud the outside of that track and put these 1.34 uh, Hornets in it. And I said, Okay. So. I said, well, go ahead and send me them. I'll dig all the megabytes or the gold diggers out and I'll put these in and we'll see what it does. Well, holy smokes. Big, big, big difference. The best thing I ever done. Just my opinion. Um, this year I had to replace probably maybe 20 of them. I had some bent and broken ones. No, I'm not running tall nuts. I know there's a whole big theory behind the tall nuts. So, all right, well, I'm going to get this skid greased. I'm going to get the rear axle out of here. I have a fourth wheel kit from Barna Parts. I'm going to get that in there. And um, these are the only two wheels we're replacing like I already mentioned here. And we'll grease up the skid and I maybe even give it a wash. So 
All right, guys, let me get this up on something and uh, get those wheels replaced. I am going to leave the rear wheels out, I think, until I get the skid back in there. I'm not sure. We'll see. So here we have it. The wheels are pretty simple to change. Got a 10 millimeter nut on the inside right here and an 8 millimeter nut on the outside. I'll go ahead and get those changed. I am running an on-couple skid. I took the blocks out. Plastic blocks here. I did it my last trip last year. Usually you got the plastic blocks to control how far the suspension comes back on acceleration. I took them out. I can't tell you. Snow conditions suck. I don't know if I like it or not. I was hoping to be able to get it to pull the front end up a little bit. I mean, we are making 300 horse, so I should be able to. Um, let me get that done. Get these wheels on. I'll get these rear wheels off. And I'll go ahead and show you once I get the fourth wheel kit on there. I'm going to do this stuff all off camera. It's pretty much self-explanatory. Just want to show you guys a quick comparison. These are the J&T wheels. They don't have all that rubber bullshit on the end. This is the second pair of Yamaha wheels on this sled. The sled doesn't even have, I think, maybe 3,000 miles on it. Second pair. Absolute garbage junk from the factory. Just... When they break and the rubber peels off, go ahead and put J&T wheels on it. I'm going to order another one, too. Yep, this one's shit, too. So, oh, yeah, money, money, money. It's always fun. All right, guys, I'm back. I want to go over how the Barna Parts fourth wheel kit goes together. Spacer, adjuster, two washers, spacer, washer, spacer, washer, Spacer, two washers, adjuster piece, spacer, and obviously your bolt. These bolts, I always use Loctite on them. I had a 700 Polaris as a kid, it blew the rear wheels apart because somebody didn't have Loctite on these bolts. So make sure you Loctite them in. That's just what I do. As you can see, it's a really nice kit. So I don't have upgraded wheels on there yet for the rear. That's coming down the road. Um, obviously everything takes money so a little bit at a time all right guys we're gonna get these coolant line protectors in there I did have to pull this piece out that the front of the skid clips on so let's go ahead and get these in there I'll, I'll go ahead and put them in off camera it's a little tight to work underneath there as you can see you gotta take these bolts out they give you longer bolts that's what holds them in there so let me get those put in and I'll show you how they work all right, and there you have it, the Barna Parts coolant line protectors installed. New bolts, like I mentioned. And you can see right in here, protect the front coolant lines where they come out of the tunnel from any rocks, ice, shit like that. So I am going to stop the video here. I'm going to be doing on the next video, pulling the brake caliper off, the rotor over down here. And I'm going to be doing a drive shaft, sa drive shaft saver. And I'm going to be inspecting the drive shaft bearing because these are known prone issues with these sleds or drive shaft bearings. So, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you on the next one. Please like, comment, and subscribe.